Last time on She Rules the Waves, I started the installation of the expansion tank and I tried to show you the challenges of life on the hard before I tried to rip out the old aft head. But I couldn't figure out how to be in two places at once. I enjoyed the town Christmas decoration and then realized that I failed miserably with the water system due to lack of parts. I also enjoyed some great food and music while trying to grasp how small the world actually is. Stay tuned! This December morning, they promised rain, and I'm planning to work inside the boat most of the day, but since it's still dry out, I'll start by making a template for the shape of my gooseneck. Okay, so one thing I have to do here is figure out the, uh, the gooseneck here. If I have to change the, the boom, I probably have to change the gooseneck too, because it's so weird and corroded and stuff. And then I have to have the uh, correct angle of this. So I'm gonna try to make a template of that. So like this. A quick and easy project done. And I wish I could say the same about the electric system, but alas. Well, here we go. Okay, so what I need to do here is I need to take the cables from the NMEA and power to the AAS and actually not have it here, but inside, uh, and then reconnect it to the correct place in there. I also have to reconnect the servo so that right now it's on the accessories. Um, I don't really want that. I want it to be straight into the um, the power so the only this one uh, can disconnect it and I want the same thing with the router so that's also one thing I'm gonna do install that router inside the cupboard and power it up there was a lot of figuring out and trial and error going on here and as I was trying to decide the best way to lay the cables I ran into trouble and had to try a different way altogether a couple of times to be honest I also didn't film the router installation for some reason, which is too bad since that was the only part of this project that went according to expectations. But eventually, after a lot of sweat and swearing, and a few of those breaks I call frustration breaks, I finally managed to get the power cable for the VHF and the AIS to pop out its tiny little head inside the closet. As usually, I, make, I do one project and it becomes way bigger. But finally, I got the little cable out there for the VHF and the AIS. Let's see if I can get it all the way. The rain kept falling on my head, or Sedna's head actually, throughout most of the day, but during one of my aforementioned frustration breaks, I actually got to see the sun show up for a brief moment to brighten my mood. I figured this would be a good time to go and check out the hall. Hey people! Ha, just kidding. I wish I had the audio for this clip, but I don't due to the not reading the manual of my new camera problem that I've mentioned a few times earlier. But I assumed that I was talking about the unexpectedly good shape of Sedna's bottom. Although I didn't power wash it when we went up on the hard, she really looks super smooth. And I also noticed the level of the waterline being mostly below the painted waterline. That's really interesting, and it's something that can possibly mean the difference between success or getting stuck forever when ready to pass through the shallower parts of the inland waterways. But as you could see, the sun didn't show for long, so it was time to go back and keep fiddling with the cables. I ended up having to route the NMEA cables under the sill instead of along the power cables in the cupboard. Annoying, yeah, but I got it done. And I also had time to configure the router and the battery management system, so it will hopefully work better until I get back here next time. But for now, it's time to say goodnight.
In the really early morning, I had to start the journey homewards again. And unfortunately, that went far from smooth. Blissfully unaware that my train had been cancelled, I drove through the misty morning, returned my car and went into the train station. After a few minutes of not understanding why my train wasn't on the screens, I managed to find an English-speaking staff member who gave me the information and helped me rebook the ticket. Unfortunately, that meant that I would miss my flight from Paris, and SAS didn't really care about my train. They would have ever let me rebook the flight, but since they had no more flights from Paris that day and I had an important meeting the next morning, that wouldn't work out. I managed to find a Lufthansa flight with a stopover that would at least let me arrive home around midnight. Although very expensive, at least I would make it. But first I had to get to Paris, and that meant a few train changes and two hours in the terminal in Lyon. And the last leg without a seat reservation. This is where I'm sitting. Two hours. You might hear me complain a lot in this channel, but the truth is that one of my superpowers is actually going with the flow and not letting unforeseen circumstances beat me down. At least I was on my way. After that whole ordeal, I got to spend Christmas at home with the boys. This year's Christmas is sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> and to end this adventurous year, me and me drove out to the country to celebrate New Year's with old and new friends, and some spectacular food and wine. Although the end of the year might be a smart place to end an episode, I feel it's a too landlubbery way to do it. So instead we'll take a time jump to February of this year and I'm once again on my way back to Sedna. Probably the last trip before the upcoming departure. I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for following our journey and I hope you'll give us a thumbs up and maybe give us a message in the comment section too. You can also check out our social media platforms for real-time updates and of course if you want to go even further check out SheRulesTheWaves.com or consider becoming a patron and join the crew. It's all up to you but at least click the subscribe button and the little bell and until next time take care. <laughs>